I hope to see you there one day. What's up, guys? It's Justin Reed with the Reed Ministry. And I got something pretty important for you guys today. The Holy Spirit put it on my heart to share this revelation that he given me while I was fasting. And um, I want to get into it because this is very important. I think very critical for the body of Christ. But before I get into it, I want to make this disclaimer. I want it to be very clear. Not everything that seems inherently good comes from God. Discernment is key. I'm going to say that again because some people missed it. Not everything that seems inherently or initially good comes from God. Discernment is key. I want to make sure I make that clear before I get into this revelation. That being said, this is the revelation that the Holy Spirit had given me during my fast. Not every experience, encounter, or miracle a believer has concerning God in heaven today is going to be explicitly mentioned in the Bible. The Bible is sufficient truth, but not exhaustive truth. And we can find this here in John chapter 20, verse 30 through 31 in the New Living Translation. This is the purpose, the initial purpose of the written word of God, the Bible. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these, this is talking about the, the scriptures, the Bible, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. The written word of God, the Bible was created so that we can have faith that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God, and that by believing in him, we will have life by the power of his name. This is why the Bible was, was, was given to us. The written word was given to us for this specific reason. But I want you guys to catch the first part of this verse. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. So there are miracles and signs that Jesus did perform amongst the disciples that's not recorded in the Bible. This is abundantly clear. And we can also see this in John chapter 21, verse 25 in the New Living Translation. It also kind of repeats this, but adds a little bit more. Jesus also did many other things. If all were written down, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that will be written. So Jesus did so many other things that were written besides what was written in the Bible that if they did record it all, there would be no room in the whole world to contain all the books that could that had to be written to express them. Right? What does this tell us? Jesus told us that because he's going up to the Father, we would do the works that he did and even greater. Now, whether this is greater as far as power or greater as far as uh, capacity, how many, the fact remains the same, that he said we would do the works he would do. But we see here clearly that all the works that Jesus did was not all recorded in the written word of God, right? Now, this brings up to this question, right? There are a lot of believers that have encounters. They may have dreams. They may have encounters where they claim to have seen Jesus and or angels or something of the sort, some type of experience, right? Now, not all of these experiences are true or not all of these experiences come from God. We made this abundantly clear in the beginning of the video. Discernment is key. Not everything that is inherently good comes from God, right? But there are some that are true, but it's not explicitly said or mentioned in the Bible. So how can we tell if you yourself, because this is a question a lot of believers have, the Lord may show you something in a dream or a revelation and you'll look for it specifically in the word and may not find it explicitly there. So you begin to doubt if it's God that actually showed you this or it was the Lord that gave you this revelation. So how do you know? How can you tell if something that you received was from God, was from the enemy, or was just something that you brought? 
right? How can you tell for yourself? And how can you tell when other believers or other people bring their experiences and encounters to you as well too, right? Well, we can find out in the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 in the New Living Translation. This is what it says. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must get this. Test them to see if their spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. So we're supposed to test the spirit. We're supposed to test the encounter. We're supposed to test the experience. We're supposed to test these spirits. But how do we do that? Right? We know we're supposed to test the spirits. But how? Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 in the New Living Translation. This is Jesus himself speaking. He gives us the criteria as to how we can test spirits, encounters, experiences, revelation. This is how we do it. You can identify them by their fruit. That is, he explains further, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So we test every spirit, every doctrine. We test every experience. We test every encounter or revelation by their fruits. So what does this look like, right? Let me give you guys a couple of questions to ask when it comes to these things of these encounters or experiences or revelations, right? What was the fruits of the encounter? Did the contents of the encounter or experience line up with the truth of the written word? Because if it did not, immediately discard it. If you have an experience or somebody comes to you with an experience and the experience that they share or that you witness does not line up with the written word of God, discard it immediately. Discard it immediately. I cannot make this more abundantly clear. If it does not line up with the written word of God, disregard it. Right? Other questions to ask. Did the encounter lead you or the person closer to God? Are further away. Now we're here in this instance. We're talking about encounters and experiences. Did it line up with the written word of God? And did it lead you or that person closer to God? Or further away. Right? Now. These are further questions to ask as well. This is how we test the spirits. Test encounters and experiences. What fruits are being produced in you? Or the person after the encounter? If the person was an unbeliever, did the encounter lead them to accepting Jesus into their hearts? After the experience that you had or a believer had, did you begin to produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit more abundantly? Was there a radical change in you or the person after the experience? And if so, was it a change in the right direction or the wrong direction? Right. This is how we test every spirit encounter and and, and, and experience and revelation. If the fruits produced from the experience or encounter are good and godly. And I'm not talking inherently or, or, or immediately. Take some time out, marinate on it, line it up with the written word. And if you come to the conclusion that the fruits produced from the experience are good and godly then you can assume that this was something from God to be enjoyed and received. But if the fruits produced from the experience are wicked and ungodly, if it doesn't line up with the written word of God, then it was not a godly revelation and shouldn't be regarded as such. I want to read Matthew chapter 7 verse 16 again. You can identify them That is the spirit, the revelation, the experience or the encounter. You can judge them by their fruits. That is the way they act or what came out of it. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree, a good experience, a good revelation, a good encounter produces good 
fruit and a bad tree, a bad experience, a bad encounter. Let me say it in plain terms, a demonic encounter or a revelation that does not come from God produces bad fruit. A good tree, a good experience cannot produce bad fruit. And a bad tree, a bad encounter, a demonic encounter cannot produce good fruit. Now, the biggest aspect of testing fruit is discernment, which is an area the church as a whole lacks today. If your discernment is not great, somebody could literally lie to your face about God the Bible, and everything in between, and you wouldn't be able to tell. That's why many are deceived today. Discernment is increased through fasting, prayer, and the digestion of God's written word. I'm specific with that word. It's not. It's more than just reading a scripture. It's more than just having your verse of the day pop up on your phone or your devotional. No, that's reading the word. We're supposed to have the word written on our hearts. And in order to do that, we have to diligently and intently digest the written word. Take notes, study, apply it to your life today. When you do these three things, right? When you do that along with fasting and prayer, your discernment begins to increase. Without these three aspects being prevalent in your lifestyle, your discernment will never be where it needs to be. And you'll always be at the mercy of the deceiver. So that's the revelation. And this is a very, um, this topic, this revelation is very touchy. It's very um, pinpoint accurate when it needs to be delivered. I wouldn't have delivered this message if the Holy Spirit didn't tell me to, but it's important because there are many, many people who the Lord has given messages to in dreams or or, or revelations, but they're stuck on the fence on whether or not to act in the revelation because they don't know how to test the fruits and see if it was actually from God or not. And there are many that's had encounters that they inherently thought was good and from God, but turned out not to be. And now they're walking around in deception, believing something came from God and it really wasn't. So it's more than just having things, revelations, experiences, encounters that are explicitly mentioned in the Bible. It's about people that are deceived as well, too, because the enemy is a deceiver. The Bible says that Satan will come as an angel of light and try to deceive many. So it's important that we know how to test every fruit or test every spirit by their fruits and also to know how to increase our discernment and make it an effort as a church to increase our discernment. Because as a whole, the church right now, our discernment is very low. It's very, very low. It's not nowhere where it needs to be. And many are deceived today, not just from encounters and experiences, but even doctrine. There are false prophets. There are false teachers and preachers on stage giving out false doctrine because we Our discernment isn't strong because we don't read and digest the written word for ourselves because we don't make fasting a lifestyle or prayer a lifestyle. We're sitting here as sitting ducks for the enemy being deceived by false prophets and and, and, and false doctrine because we don't know any better. We're at the mercy of the deceiver, right? We need to take back control. Jesus has given us the authority. He's given us the power to overcome sin and defeat the enemy. It's already been done. We have to do our part. We have to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. So hopefully this helps. I'm going to say the revelation one more time. Not every experience, encounter or miracle a believer has concerning God in heaven today is going to be explicitly mentioned in the Bible. The Bible is sufficient truth, but not exhaustive truth. Amen. That's all I have for today. Hopefully somebody received something from this today. Um, If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to, to, to help you to answer. But that's all I have for you guys. God bless. I think I'm going to praise you all night. Send your spirit in the place so I can send a good No 